Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com. It's the middle of October and I thought it was time for another one of those garden tours brought to you by my sponsor, Vessi Seeds. Uh, almost all the seeds in my garden this season were provided by Vessi Seeds and they help support the, uh, the, YouTube, the YouTube channel and the podcast. Uh, if you want to help support my YouTube channel and podcast and they sell something you need, go to their website, use the coupon code GAVS20, which is good till the end of 2020 <coughs> and buy something <laughs> that'll help support my channel buy something you need um, but anyway uh, yeah it's uh, it's October and we're getting into relatively regular uh, frost in the morning there's frost on some of the uh, ground here in the garden today so um, yeah I mean you know the growing season's kind of over there's still a lot of things growing in the garden and still pulling a lot of stuff out of the garden so why don't I take you around and <coughs> show you what's going on come on all right, so here we are at the entrance of the garden and uh, the hugo culture beds, uh, raised, I guess you could call them raised hugo culture beds, uh, outside the uh, gardening enclosure. Uh, I picked the garlic in here. Squash and potatoes are all done. And actually in this bed, I planted garlic for next year already. They're planted and I got the leaf mulch on there. I love leaf mulch. That's what people are throwing out right now. So that's what I'm using. Into the garden, you can see it's around, uh, what is it? 8.30 in the morning, so it's, bit of mist still in the air and uh, still a little bit of frost here and there that you can find. Uh, uh, over here we got the uh, winter boar kale. This is the best time of year to harvest this kale. It tastes the best this time of year, winter boar kale, but these are like trees doing great. Uh, parsnips are still growing. They don't look that impressive, but I got some nice ones in there. And a little bit more um, kale over there. Uh, over here, just sort of putting gardens away and doing a bit of stuff. Uh, in, in this garden here, I had uh, kale and this French sorrel growing. I, I don't think they're good neighbors at all. Um, the sorrel uh, just seems to uh, create an optimum situation for slugs. Everywhere that the, uh, I've talked about this in previous videos, but just about everywhere where my kale is in contact with the sorrel, I've got slug, slug and snail problems. Uh, otherwise, I don't really have too much problem. So, um, I like the soil and it's, it's handy in soups and things like that and, and salads and I mean it's, it's, a, it's a pleasant, easy to grow uh, green and I'm pretty sure it's perennial. So what I did is I, using the shovel there, I plucked some of it out and I put it over here in this garden. So this garden looks a little bit forlorn but uh, that's just because a lot of them uh, just got, got damaged in the moving process. They have really deep roots and I'm kind of... Uh, not looking forward to having to pull all these out. So uh, never plant them in with kale. <laughs> not a good plan. Really deep roots, kind of like a, almost like a parsnip, like a really big, big, heavy, deep root. Uh, so I just decided that things don't grow very well in this garden anyway. It gets a lot of shade. So I decided just to make this a French sorrel perennial garden. Um, over here, I had planted this uh, bloody dock, which is another sorrel type plant. Uh, you know, you'd use it in soups and borscht and, you know, some things like that. You'd use a, maybe a couple leaves in a salad to give it a nice color. They're very pretty, pretty foliage, right? Um, some people even use them as ornamentals. Anyway, I had some direct seeded here. I decided to pluck some of them out and put them over here. So this is that sort of covered because things really, this is this really shady spot. So things really, it's not very productive part of the garden. So I thought, well, why don't I just plant something that's, you know, handy to have and, uh, you know, a good resource, but uh, not something I'm trying to grow in any large amount. So this is Bloody Dock. So that's another thing I did this fall. I just did that a few, maybe three weeks ago I did that. And, you know, they, they kind of drooped down and looked half dead when I first moved them, but they're doing great. Just like the French sorrel, these have pretty elaborate deep root systems. So, uh, yeah, I think they'll be very happy here and uh, grow. They're not going to grow super fast, but I don't use a lot of these, right? So uh, this is fine. It's totally fine set up for that. Uh, this, this is a carrot garden. There's still a handful of carrots in here and I'm still pulling carrots out of it, but it's just, just about done. These are the first carrots I used. First ones I planted, first ones that came in, so I'm using those first. Uh, I still have another carrot garden, but um, I'm just not using that yet. Uh, over here, um, this was uh, a garlic garden but the garlic's all done. I had some uh, Egyptian walking onions uh, planted in with this. Is, if, if, if you had Egyptian walking onions, this is the time of year to take the little, you know, sort of, you know, the top of the plant has these little uh, bulbs, uh, very similar to the way a, a garlic will put out bulbs if you don't cut the, uh, 
um, you know, the, what, what is that thing called? The thing that comes out of a garlic and goes up, um, the garlic scape. If you don't cut the garlic scape off, a little bulbul appears and little teeny tiny garlics grow on top of that thing. Egyptian walking onions do the same thing. They put out this big spear, um, you know, like, like what garlic puts out and there's all these bulbs at the top and it tips over and they, they'll self-plant. But um, you, you'll get better results if you break them up and you distribute them. So I did the, these were planted last fall and uh, I'm just using these. This is not going to be a, you know, Egyptian walking onion or garlic garden next year. Um, so I'm just using these as I need them. Uh, this was carrots. I don't know if you remember if you were following along since last spring, but I had a heck of a time getting carrots going this year. But eventually I got carrots. Now I got all kinds, but I, I don't harvest these till like November usually. I like to let them get a lot of good frosts in. Um, this was beans, it's done. Uh, this was a garlic bed, that's done. Uh, I tried in this garden planting, um, oh, what's it called? Winter rye, to use it as a living mulch. I've read about people, a lot of people talk about that. I've read about it, sounds like a great idea. When I planted it here, well, I just had a thousand chipmunks come in and take all the seeds. <laughs> I tried burying it, they dug it up. I tried putting it on top, they took it. Uh, don't really feel like killing a half a dozen chipmunks. So I'm guessing just for my spot here with the wildlife I've got, it's not the best solution for me. <laughs> I've got a huge bag of it too. Um, this is a garlic garden. This is where I put my garlic for next year. There's a bit of uh, lettuce growing here. This was um, a beautiful uh, cucumber garden, and that's been done for well over a month. So um, I planted a little bit of lettuce around the beginning of August, I think, and it's coming in, but it's not doing that great. Uh, but, you know, there is some lettuce there. Nothing, nothing, to, nothing to write home about. Uh, this is where I have my peppers. They're all done. This tomato plant's got the tar kicked out of it from frost, so it's kind of kind of done. I should have cut this off and hung it up. What you do with the cherry tomato plant just before you get your frost is you cut it off at the bottom and you hang it upside down indoors somewhere, preferably near a window, and they will, you know, the cherry tomatoes will ripen. You just pick them off as you want. Um, but uh, I didn't, <laughs> I just forgot to do that. So I got so many tomatoes right now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, that was just, this wasn't even a planned, uh, these came up wild. They weren't particularly great tasting and uh, they tend to, this particular wild cherry tomato tend to split before they ripen. So, you know, I didn't, sometimes a wild tomato comes up and you get like a magical tomato. This was not a magic tomato. This one uh, is uh, not worth saving the seeds from. <laughs> um, nice kale garden here. I mean, the kale's still growing strong. That's why it's so wonderful when I mean, you plant uh, kale in April and it just gives you produce all summer long and into October and November, even December sometimes. The leaves can freeze and thaw and the plant just keeps going and going and going and it tastes better this time of year. So well, that's my kind of fall gardening. <laughs> Do your planting in April and enjoy it. Um, more parsnips here, right? They're doing great. Um, they look kind of, it's just the frost. The frost sort of lays them down a little bit, but they're still growing, they're still developing and it's way to me. It's, it's you know, this is around, you, you just begin to pick parsnips right now. It's still a bit early in my opinion. I like to wait till November. They just taste so much better if you wait. Uh, this was a potato garden. That's all done. I've mulched them. I'm starting to gather mulch and you know, I'm just using leaves mostly this year, but uh, that's just what is easy to get right now. Uh, strawberries, they're sort of done for the year. Uh, more strawberries here. I, I got this weird kale plant that just came up in my walking path. Uh, I've just been harvesting kale. It grew so well. I've just let it, I just let it stay there and I've been harvesting kale off of it. Uh, this garden is uh, garlic all planted and mulched, ready for next year. You know, I start planting my garlic when I start getting, you know, one frost a week, you know, that sort of thing. When you, when you start getting your frost, for me, that's when you start thinking about planting garlic. You can plant it as early as September, but for me, it's when I'm seeing the frost in the morning, that's when I think, I better get my garlic in. Uh, that, you know, and I, I, I just did a video on that. If you want to know more about that, uh, watch that video. It's about three or four videos back if you look at my recent uploads. Um, this was the garlic garden last year, uh, just a rogue random kale that came up out of it as well. Uh, this is all the foliage from the, uh, this garden was corn, so that's all the corn stalks. Uh, I keep meaning to gather this all up and take it on the lawn and run over with a lawnmower and all that. 
I don't know if that's going to happen. I might just leave it like that and let it rot. <laughs> really depends on my mood. Uh, I can't remember what I had growing here. This was potatoes and peas, I believe. That's all done. Needs a mulch. Uh, this was zucchini. Totally done. <laughs> the zucchini is destroyed <laughs> by the frost. And we got some more uh, strawberries over there. They're pretty much done producing. I'm getting the odd strawberry now because I got the ever-bearing variety, but they're pretty much done. Uh, this part of the garden's just perennials. You know, I got blueberries here. I got a little spot here. I'm trying to, use, using the layering method, you know, migrate the blueberries to, to fill the whole bed. So one of these branches will be, I'll do that with it next spring to the whole thing. Anyway, I had a little space here, so I stuck one of my sort of spare kale in there. It's done pretty good. Um, more blueberries here, some strawberries here. All that stuff's done, right? These blueberries are done. Uh, over here, got some apples on my tree, but look at this. I mean, something, I think the chipmunks are just going to town on these apples. I've just had no luck with apples here. Um, anyway, I got some good tasting apples on this tree, uh, but they're just, this, this just, we had like a population explosion with chipmunks and, you know, the decision was to go to war with them or just ride it out. Uh, for the most part, I've just ridden it out. So I've lost some things, but, uh, you know, I still got a good, good harvest this year, but certainly, uh, this, uh, apple tree is making them very happy. They're getting more out of the tree than I am. That's for sure. Um, my experiment with the raspberries was a fail. You know, we had frost three days this week. We were getting frost almost every morning or every other morning. We got frost this morning. These are not developed. So that trick I tried, I did a whole dedicated video on <coughs> uh, ever bearing raspberries. This, this trick for getting them to uh, uh, grow a bit early when you have a short season, it didn't work. I gotta pull these all out. They just do not work here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've tried the, the, the classic technique for, you know, cutting off the, you know, cutting them sort of halfway down. Uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, what you're, what you're supposed to do is whatever new shoots you, you cut them about halfway down and they put, they put berries about on the, on the cut half <clears throat> and send new shoots up, which make berries in the fall. I just do not get enough, and I've talked all about this in the video, so I don't want to get onto it here, but uh, I've tried two, three different techniques for getting uh, berries off these. I just do not have the sun and the heat for an ever-bearing variety in the summer. That's it. So uh, they got to go. I got to get a, a July, July bearing variety. Uh, partridge berries had a good season. I'm going to mulch this. I'm thinking of mulching these partridge berries with uh, moss, actually. I got a lot of it sort of down in the woods here. I'm not going not gonna to strip the forest bare, just take a little bit here and there sort of thing, right? There's a couple rocks where moss is growing on them. I figured it's not really going to do much. <laughs> so, and again, I'm not going to strip the forest floor clean, right? And it's my land anyway. Anyway, I thought, you know, they sort of grow in that kind of environment anyway, so perhaps it would make a good uh, mulch for, uh, for the partridge berries. I've seen people do that with blueberries. And, you know, partridge berry and blueberry, similar kind of soil requirements. They, they, don't, they don't mind an acidic soil at all. So, uh, yeah, I mean, these, these put on some growth this year. And I'm hoping to get some decent uh, partridge berry, lingonberries next year. Over here, I got the, still got some Swiss chard growing. Uh, more parsnips and parsley, still going on strong. Uh, got a really nice uh, Egyptian, this was Egyptian walking onion and garlic. And so what I did was I decided to just leave it be an Egyptian walking onion garlic. Give it a second here. And you can see, so I took the, the little bulbils, the heads off, and planted them in rows. Right? And they've, they've started to grow. Um, of, of course, once it starts to freeze, they'll, they'll get, you know, destroyed. <laughs> but uh, they'll come back, right? They're extremely tough, extremely hardy plants. So this whole garden will, will have these next year, right? And I found as the fall has gone on, I've just gotten more and more growth out of my Egyptian walking onions. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give this bed a second year because I've already got these mature ones here. And I think they'll put out a lot of bulbils so I can get even more of them. They're a really handy um, the vegetable. And you don't get the nice big onion head like you would with a typical onion. But, I mean, you've got, basically you use onion because it's a flavor. 
And this is a way of growing onion flavor. Costs nothing, they're self-perpetuating. Just a wonderful thing to have in your garden. I wouldn't want all my onions to be Egyptian walking onions, but I think one dedicated bed is a really handy thing to have in your, you know, sort of food resource garden. Uh, still got a couple of beets to pick over here. I'm gonna pick these soon, this weekend. I'm gonna get that done. Uh, these uh, um, broccoli are, what are they called? Uh, I can't remember the variety now. I'll put it up on the screen. But uh, it starts with an A. Artwork, yeah, art, artwork broccolini. They're still still putting out little heads, right? So, I mean, the heads, every every wave of heads you get, they get a little smaller and a little smaller and a little smaller. And, you know, things have slowed down because it's getting cold. But, yeah, I'm still getting them. Um, but, uh, yeah, really happy with the artwork broccolini. Uh, I got my, these are tomatoes here. I've got them covered with just a... A painting tarp, right, because of the frost. But, uh, you know, it's pretty much the jig's probably up for tomatoes. I think I'm going to green tomato chow the rest of um, them. If I have the time, I'll make a video on how to make green tomato chow for those that are interested. Really popular sort of traditional Nova Scotian thing because it's, uh, I guess, I guess traditionally a lot of the tomatoes did not uh, ripen here, right? So, um, I could put one of my nice plastic domes over this, but I was just, it was one evening, it was the end of the day, and it's just a lot quicker and easier to get this. The domes are sort of stored way over there in the forest somewhere, and it's just a pain to get them out. So I got this one. This is a nice clean one. It's been through the washing machine. Uh, so uh, it's what they call a runner for those that are painters. <laughs> um, anyway, so this works great. Uh, yeah, squash are all done, all picked and everything like that. Uh, I've still got my... Um, Collard greens, i got to pick some of these really soon. Uh, and, uh, yeah, more of these uh, you know, squash being done. These beds are all done. I think that one I put garlic in. That's a garlic bed. Looks like the birds have been down in there. Uh, all the different uh, perennial um, berry bushes that I got this year uh, grew well this summer, and I'm expecting a really good year. That's the uh, hascaps and, uh, you know, all that sort of stuff. What I got from uh, Wh Whiffle Tree Farms, some hascap berries and the uh, lingonberries from Whiffle Tree Farms. Really happy with them and really grateful for that nice gift they gave me. Everywhere I've got them growing. See, there's another one here. They've done well. So next year, I'll probably get some nice results out of those. So that's where we are, middle of October 2020. It's been a great, uh, great growing season. I, I really can't complain about the results I got this year. Still plenty to do in the garden. Uh, you know, this is, for me, I find the fall the busiest time in the garden. August, from August right on through to, to, to freeze up, basically. Um, you know, in August, you're just trying to keep up with everything that's coming out of your garden. And then in the fall, you're just trying to get everything ready for the next year so you don't have so much work to do the following spring. It's just so much easier to get work done in the fall because the, the temperature is just right. It's not too hot, not too cold. There's no flies. You know, it's just, just so, so uh, such a wonderful time for planning next year's garden and getting all that work done. And all the trees are providing the mulch that you need to get your garden mulch. So you don't have to go driving around. You know, I know people that'll drive an hour out of town to get a bale of hay when you can just grab a couple bags of leaves and you're gonna get the same results, <laughs> right? So <laughs> for me, that's a lot easier. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, garden tour useful. I hope there's some uh, little tips or tricks or anything like, you know, some, some insights that uh, help, uh, help you with your garden or you just enjoyed walking around and uh, having a look around. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, maritimegardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.